super awesome. Um, and today we're going to be in a passage that is really, really important to me. I was the student body president at my college in my senior year, all the way back in 2018 to 2019. Um, and I loved it. And going into the year, I had to, you know, kind of come up with a theme for our student body. Figure out, okay, Lord, where are you, what are you wanting to do this year at our school? And the passage we're going to be in today, the very end of it is the portion that he gave me. And so we're going to be in a lot more of just what he gave me, but the passage we're going to be in is so, so, so important. And you probably might know where we're going to be when I tell you to turn to Isaiah 43 in your Bibles. You know, I figured the message today is titled, What's New? It's the New Year. So I feel like it just fit really well together. But you can turn to Isaiah uh, chapter 43. Now this phrase, what's new? I think it's a phrase that a lot of us have heard before. A lot of us have probably even said it, right? Hey, what's new? And if you don't say what's new, it's usually like, catch me up on what's going on or, you know, something along those lines. What's happening? What's going on these days? But this morning, I want us to think about it with some different lenses. What if when someone asks us what's new, we didn't just think of, oh, you know, I just got this really great thing from my kids on Christmas or... I got to spend such good time with family a couple weeks ago, or I got to see a friend that we haven't gotten to catch up in years, and it was so awesome. What if we didn't just think of the outside, right? What happens, what's new in our physical life? But what if we also thought about what the Lord has been walking us through? What if we also thought about what we sense he's getting ready to do in our lives? What if we thought about the newness from the Lord that he's bringing or what's new on the inside of us. Let's go ahead and read Isaiah 43, verses 15 through 19 together. It says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves And they drowned, their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness, and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. That last verse is what is so stinking good to me that he's already started something new in our lives. So I have three points for you on this lovely New Year's morning, and I'll give you a hint to each of them. They have to do with your past, they have to do with your future, and with your present or your today. So without further ado, let's dive right in to the first one, which is God has done new things before. And we all know if he's done things before, if he's been a certain way before, chances are, and by chances I mean 100%, 10 out of 10, it will continue to happen until the end of time. How many of us can say we have clearly seen God move in our lives or heard about him moving in somebody else's life? Show of hands. Yeah. Everybody's hand should be up because if we don't feel we've experienced it, we probably have, but we've also heard, I've heard a lot of stories of how the Lord has showed up for people. He's so powerful and he's so caring for us that he's always doing something new, even in the old, even in the days that have already passed, which can kind of sound a little bit confusing, right? New and old are direct opposites of each other. An old pair of shoes versus a new pair of shoes are not the same thing. <clears throat> but here's what I'm meaning by God can do new things in the old. We should remember what he's done before and call it to our memory as we look ahead with expectation to what he's going to do. Right? There are things that we have to remember that God has already done in our lives 
that how he showed up for us, how he's seen us through something, how we've grown, what he's spoken to us in order to move ahead with that confidence and that trust and that faith in him of he's done this before, so he'll probably do it again. But wait, doesn't verse 18 literally say, don't remember the past, forget the things of old, forget the things that have already happened? Yes, you would be correct. It's exactly what verse 18 says. But here's what I believe this to mean. I think that there are certain things that we should remember, we have to remember. But we have to be careful we're not sitting in the past. Right? We have to be careful we're not planted in five years ago what God spoke to me then, that we've missed everything else he spoke in the four years after. In this context, the Jewish people had to remember how the Lord delivered them from slavery and everything he did while they were in the wilderness, right? They had to remember he was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night leading them. They had to remember he literally parted a sea for them to get away from their enemies. They had to remember that he sent someone specifically to rescue them. They had to remember to call these things to memory. And all of these things were worthy to be remembered with thankfulness and praise for the glory of God and for the encouragement of his people. Yet they're not supposed to be remembered in comparison to what he is going to do. If I'm sitting in what God has already done in my life, if I'm dwelling in the past, and if I'm comparing what he's already done or what he's already spoken to me to what he hasn't done yet or what he has not yet spoken to me, I don't necessarily know that I'm making the room that he deserves for him to be praised because I'm stuck in this place of comparison of, well, but he spoke this to me three years ago. Why isn't he speaking the same thing to me now? Or that's what he said 10 years ago. So why, like, why can't I just stay there? A sort of his newness kind of gets robbed from us when we get stuck in that place of comparison. I mean, think about it. I'm thankful for what the Lord did in and through me this past year. It was a really awesome year. But if I stayed in a place of comparison to last year versus this year, I don't leave any, new, any room for newness of the Lord. God has always, always has something new waiting for you, for your blessing and for his glory. Deuteronomy 32, 7 says to remember the days long ago. Think about the generations past to remember the days long ago. We have to remember what God has done in our lives this past year. How he's helped us grow, how he's empowered us, but don't compare the old to the new. This is a new year. And yes, it's a new year, but every day is new. Every day is a fresh start with Jesus. So don't dwell in your past because the Lord already did new things there. There's more new that he's getting ready to do. He had your past. And if he had your past, why wouldn't he have your future? Which brings me to point number two. God has new things for you that are yet to come. Now, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a very futuristic person. I am constantly like dreaming and thinking about five years from now, two years from now, 10 years from now. I love to think about the future. I understand not everybody is like that. My sister gets a little wigged by the future sometimes, but to me, the future is just so exciting. And when I know that God has new things waiting for me that haven't happened yet, that just gets me so psyched. I'm kind of a control freak also. So I like want to know what they are, when they're going to happen, how they're going to happen, you know, all the details. And I don't get to know that, thankfully. But at this time of year, we're all thinking about the future, I think. I mean, it's January 1st. We are all thinking about this year. What's new? What's to come? Right? We're thinking about what resolutions am I going to make for myself? What things do I want to change? Will I get a really big tax refund this year? Will that business venture finally take off? Will this year really look any different than last year looked? I don't know about you, but change is really, really hard for me. If I'm anticipating a change, no problem. We're fine. But change is 
challenging. I don't think I know one person who's like, I just love when things just come out of left field out of nowhere. I don't think anybody exists like that, but if they are, then God bless them because that's not me. But you can even ask anybody who knows me, even if it's coming down to a plan changing, like if Sean and I have decided, okay, we're going to go this place for dinner, but then it changes, I'm like, I need a second to like, okay, that's fine. It's not what I was planning on, but that's okay. It's a weird little quirk about me. But change is hard for me, all that to say. We all get comfortable with where we're at, right? We get comfortable with the way things look. We get comfortable with the circle of people that we have in our lives. And everybody just gets used to their life and what life looks like and the way that things are. Now, a few years ago, I um, was in college and I went to this church just randomly one morning. um, And I was processing through a big change happening in my life. And the pastor said something that I have never forgotten. And he said to the congregation, why are you clinging to good and you're holding on to good and you're chasing good when God is literally just waiting for you to let go and give you the great? Why am I chasing the good when great is literally right in front of me? All I have to do is let go and grab it. The Lord wants to bless you beyond end. He's just waiting for you to just let go, give your fears and worries, your dreams and your desires. Completely give your future to him. Surrender it to him. He will not fail you. The future is scary because it's unknown. Change is scary because it's not what we were ready for. It's unknown. It kind of shakes things up a little bit. But through all the change... Through all the transition and all of the unknown, the unchanging one is with us, and he will always make himself known to us. I mean, we just went through a whole series where we memorized Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same. That was a test. You passed. Good job. But we went through a whole series where we talked about how Jesus is the same. He's unchanging. Even if things around us are changing, He doesn't change. That not only gives me such hope for all of my tomorrows, but especially for my today. God is doing a new thing today. It's already started. I want to revisit verse 19 for a quick minute in Isaiah uh, 43. The Lord says, do you not see it? Don't you see it? After he says, See, I've already begun to do something new. What he's asking us here is he's saying, you don't see I've already started something new? Like, will you stay in step with my spirit? Will you stay in tune with me? Will you continue to follow me? Because as you continue to follow me, you'll sense the newness that I'm already bringing into your life today. God is always with us. He is always going to bring a newness to our lives. He's always looking out for us. And even in the moments when it may not feel like it, even in the moments where things just feel like they've been the same for the past few years, even in the moments where it feels like God has been silent, it feels like he's not been here. Something I tell our youth students all the time is that feelings are fleeting. I can't remember what I felt like two days ago. Even if I feel if God is silent, even if I feel that he's distant, Feelings aren't truth. Truth is that God isn't silent. Truth is that God is not distant. He is near. Feelings are fleeting. So even if I feel a certain way, I know his newness is here today. And we will see the new thing he's already begun by keeping in step with him. Something that always gives me a feeling of newness, you're going to laugh when I tell you this because it's not new at all, um, is the movie Avengers Endgame. I love the Avengers movie. You can ask Sean. I'm a little bit of a Marvel geek, which might be surprising. But I love Marvel, you guys. Like, it is so good. Let me clarify. I only like up until phase three of Marvel. Okay, these whole alien things that are happening now, not my jam. I just like your good old classic superheroes. Anybody else with me? You just like a good superhero. Yes. Thank you. Okay. 
So Avengers Endgame, I'm not going to spoil anything if anybody has not seen it, came out a long time ago. But there's this part in the movie that just gives me this feeling of like, I'm watching it for the first time every single time. But there's a movie that comes before it that has to set up that feeling of newness, and it is called Avengers Infinity War. Um, and there is this one part in this movie, it's at the very beginning, and I love it. Um, let me set the scene for you real quick. But Peter Parker, who we all know as Spider-Man, if you don't, sorry, secret's out now. Tony Stark, Iron Man, they're like kind of besties, kind of not. So Tony Stark tells Peter Parker, hey, stay on that ship because we've got to make sure that the guy on there stays secure, stays safe. And he's like, okay. And then Tony realizes, oh, he's in a suit made out of fabric and he's going into outer space. This kid is going to (laughs) die. So he realizes that, launches up to try and save him. And that's where the scene picks up. And I thought it would be fun to start the new year off Turn your attention to the screen. Let's watch a little bit of this movie together. Wong, you're invited to my wedding. Give me a little juice, Friday. Unlock 17A. Go, I'm gonna catch you. But you said save the wizard! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're too high up, you're running out of air. Yeah. That makes sense. my wedding okay so um I love love that scene of the movie and I watched it and was like oh my gosh this is totally like the newness that I'm talking about because he Spider-Man is so fixated on what Tony Stark had already asked him to do and then he has this realization he's like oh shoot I gotta go get this kid and as he's before he even sees him in his eyesight He says to his little robot assistant or whatever, unlock 17A. So he starts that new suit on its way before he even gets to him yet, before he can even reach signal for Spider-Man to hear him. And then he gets to him and he's like, you got to let go. I'm going to catch you. You're running out of air. I'm going to catch you. But he's so stubborn and he's so, but you said this, you said this, you said this. And then he falls. And then out of nowhere, the new thing that Tony Stark had ready and waiting for him catches him. And he is like stoked out of his mind in this metal suit. He's like, it smells like a new car in here. This is awesome. It comes with all these new features. God sees us when we're about to fall. He has that new thing coming for us before we even realize there's even a new thing that's headed our way. He sees us when we're falling and yet He's always right there waiting to catch us, waiting to give us his newness, something so much better than what we are so desperately clinging to. I mean, Peter Parker had absolutely no idea that Tony Stark had a brand new suit for him. Simply knowing this guy, simply knowing Iron Man, just automatically kind of meant you're just going to keep getting new suits because he's an inventor. That's just what he does. Simply knowing God and walking with him, it's the exact same thing. Simply by knowing him, we are automatically promised newness day after day after day. Newness of life, new promises, new words, new connections, new revelations. And that's all just because we say yes to knowing him and following him and walking with him. Often when God makes a promise, we don't know when it's coming. Because of this, we worry about the details or the obstacles it'll take to get that or even if it's going to be fulfilled or not. Whenever he gives us a promise, though, a command follows. And most of the time when we're given a promise, that command is to trust him. Trust his timing. 
trust his way. That's why in verse 19, he continues on in reminding us that he will make a pathway in the wilderness and he will make a river in the dry desert. What he's getting at here is he's just telling us not to worry. He has resources and he has plans and he has ways we have absolutely no idea about. We can't even begin to fathom. We get to leave the obstacles. We get to leave the timing all up to him. All we get to do is know that he's given us a promise and he's never broken a promise so that he's never going to. Even in our stubbornness like Peter Parker or a worry about what's to come, even before we listen to him, the Lord already has something new on the way. It could be a new job or an opportunity. It could be a new friendship. It could even be a fresh perspective on something. The Lord is holding you today in his hands. So friends, I encourage you to just let go and allow him to give you the newness that he has ready and waiting for you. Looking back on this year and even the past several years, the Lord has done some really incredible things. There have been some really hard and some really stressful times. There's been some seasons of excitement and anticipation. There has been times of loss and there's been times of joy. And yet through it all, God has done something new in the everyday. All we have to do is look for it. So next time someone asks you, hey, what's new? Share with them the exciting things, the people that you've gotten to connect with, the things that you've received recently. But I also encourage you, share, share what the Lord's been doing in your life. Share what he's been walking you through. On this day that feels like a fresh start, on this New Year's Day, let us look with the perception that God has already started doing something new. Even before midnight on January 1st, 2023, he has already started doing something new. As we look back at all the new the Lord has given us, let us look ahead to all the new that he is waiting for us. Lord, we love you. Jesus, we are so, so, so grateful that you care enough about us in our stubbornness and Lord, just in our humanity that you just, you promise us things. Lord, that you promise us things to bless us so that we in turn will glorify you, so that we in turn will praise you and worship you. Jesus, I thank you for your patience with us. I thank you for the newness of life that you bring. Lord, it's all over your word that the old is gone, the new has come. Lord, we even sang this morning, my chains are gone, I've been set free. Jesus, would we enter into this year with this mindset? of, oh no, no, my, those, those chains are gone. I'm free now. The old is gone, the new has come. Father, would you help us to, remi would you help remind us of the things that you've done in our lives before? But Lord, would you help our minds also stay fixed on anticipation of what you have yet to do? Holy Spirit, bring that excitement back into our lives of, I can't wait to see what God's gonna do this year. I can't wait to see what he's going to speak to me, the people he's going to bring into my life, the opportunity that um, he's going to open for me. Jesus, and at the end of the day, in all of the new, would our hearts just be so fixated on the posture of worshiping you and thanking you for it? Lord, we love you. We give our day to you. And Lord, we're excited about the newness that you have to do this year. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you. And it's in your mighty name that we say, amen.